Welcome everyone. My name is Josef Schlacher and I'm a PhD student in material science at the Modern University at Lyon. In my PhD project, I'm focusing on the mechanical characterization of 3D printed ceramics as well as multimaterial systems. Today, I would like to show you how we can significantly improve the strength of additive manufactured aluminum. Therefore, the aim of this study was to investigate a strategy for designing aluminum ceramics with enhanced strength. So what have we reached so far? We've been studying the influence of sintering condition as well as surface condition with the mechanical properties of 3D printed alumina. During this presentation, I will briefly sum up what is the influence of a higher or lower sintering temperature on the strength of 3D printed alumina and how the choice of the printing direction in relation to the testing may be influenced the strength. The main focus on this presentation will be how we can achieve 3D printed alumina with unprecedented strength using a so-called multi-material approach. So how can we describe the strength of ceramics? Ceramics are brittle. <clears throat> Therefore, a fracture of ceramics starts from defect, which can be described as cracked according to the Grillet-Burwan criterion. If the stress intensity factor at the crack deep K exceeds or, or reaches or exceeds the, the fracture toughness of the material K1C, failure will occur. Since these defects differ in the size, shape, and location, ceramics cannot be described by a single value. Therefore, the failure stress of the sets are plotted together with the probability of failure in a so called viable diagram. To describe such strength distribution, we can basically extract two parameters the viable modulus N which is a measuring of scattering. Imagine a low scattering means a high viral modulus and a characteristic strength sigma zero where the probability of failure is 63%. For the sample of the study we fabricated by using the lithography-based ceramic manufacturing technology, which was developed by Litos. This novel LCM printing system consists of a, a building platform which is lowering into a transparent rotating vat filled with a photosensitive ceramic polymer slurry. During the layer by layer printing process, the slurry is exposed by light through a projection system from below. <coughs> this novel technique allows the layer by layer fabrication of bulk materials, as can be seen here. So, what could be an investigate on such bulk alumina samples. So here we can see the different samples of alumina, the same slurry, in different printing direction, X, Y, and Z, were investigated under uniaxial bending. All the samples were sintered at lower temperature and they exhibit a density of approximately 96%. It can be seen <clears throat> that this material has a relatively fine-grained microstructure. However, it exhibits a high level of porosity, especially at the interfaces. This is a clear effect of the printing direction. Um, there we can see a clear effect of the printing direction on the strength distribution. The characteristic strength in X and Y is relatively high with 500 megapascals, which can be related to the rather fine grained microstructure. However, the strength in Z configuration is significantly lower. This effect can maybe be explained by such volume defects, which can be seen on fracture surfaces, with, which, which will be activated on certain testing directions. In contrast to that, samples seen that at higher temperature yield a more homogeneous microstructure. And only surface-related pores were found on the fracture surface. The difference in the strength distribution between X, Y, and Z is almost negligible, with just a slightly lower strength than before. This may be related to the, the, the cursor microstructure. However, to sum up, using the appropriate sintering temperature allows the fabrication of almost direction independent ceramics. So, how can we significantly improve the strength of the 3D printed alumina ceramic? One approach would be with designing with residual stresses. And in every case that dissimilar materials are sealed together through a strong bonding, 
and undergo a differential dimensional change, stresses arise between the material. The strain mismatch between the layer can be, in most cases, due to different coefficient of thermal expansion, CPEs, and in some cases, due to, due to the phase transformation or chemical reaction within layers. So we can introduce compressive stresses rather at the surface or embedded. Um, this can be analytically estimated with the following relations. The residual stresses can therefore be tailored using an appropriate um, volume ratio. <clears throat> Here on the right image, compressive residual stresses were embedded in the architecture, and high resistance against crack propagation can be achieved, where cracks can even arrest at the interface. This is a so-called damage tolerance system. Today, I'm more focusing on design with enhanced mechanical resistance with compressive surface layers, which is based on the results <clears throat> achieved in strength and gas. Concept first studied by Nordberg, technically exploited by the company Tonic and Gorilla Glass. So, how is it possible to design multi-materials by using the LCM printing technique? So based on the developments in the sector of the lithographic printing, the LCM printer has been adapted by Litos using a two-watt system with separated field stirrers to enable a layer by layer. Um, the position of different materials. This novel multi material printer allows the accurate printing of such systems. All the multi material samples in this study were printed by Litus. <coughs> All the materials employed in this work were alumina and zirconia toughened alumina with 20% volume zirconia. Our example of both samples were fabricated for the characterization of the material properties. The Young's model of alumina is higher than the one of the CTA, which fits well to the literature. The CTA monolith uh, shows this lower Young's model is due to the addition of this volume percent zirconia. The CTEs for both monolithic alumina and CTE, CTA are in the range for to typically alumina ceramic. It is worth highlighting that especially this high accuracy for this measurement is, is important for a good estimation of the residual stresses. If we take a look on the fracture toughness, we can see the fracture toughness of the CTA is higher than the one of the alumina material. This higher fracture toughness can be <clears throat> explained by the Stress induced phase transformation and such tetragonal stabilized zirconia, which is also known as a toughening effect. For the, for the strength evaluation, disc shaped samples were printed in both alumina and the multimaterial alumina system. In the multimaterial system, the total layer thickness after sintering was chosen to be 70 micron top surface alumina region and 700 microns in the CTE region, which corresponds to a volume ratio of 0 0.2. So we can say that in the multi-material, the in-plane compressive residual stresses um, was estimated as approximately 320 megapascals and is almost five times higher than the denser residual stresses. This is a consequence of this appropriate uh, uh, volume ratio. So let's take a look on the microstructure of both sample sets. The microstructure of bulk alumina sample has a rather fine grain, um, grain size distribution. This microstructure seems very homogeneous along the printing direction and shows a low amount of porosity. And therefore, no boundaries between individual layers can be seen. So the same is valid for the microstructure of the margin material system. I think we can see it exhibit a sharp interface between the alumina region and the CTE region. So in conclusion, both microstructures are homogeneous 
which may be <clears throat> traced back to the appropriate choice of the centering conditions of 1,600 degrees for two hours and the accuracy of the multi-material LCM printing technique. The top alumina region shows a very similar brain dust stress distribution than the monolithic one. So for the monolithic as well as multi-material disc shape, samples were tested under BXR banding using a so-called ball and free ball test. In this loading configuration, the specimens are symmetrically supported by three balls and loaded by a fourth ball in the center of the opposite face. In the ball and free ball test, the strength is defined as the maximum tensile stress in the midpoint of the specimen. In the case of the monolithic disc shape samples, the, the prefactor is depending on the geometry and the Poisson ratio. In the case of the multi-material sample, at the moment of fracture, the applied stress can be defined as strength of multi-material samples. So this calculated strength of the multi-material can be subdivided into the contribution of the unshielded, uh, unshielded <clears throat> stress and the compressive residual stresses in the outermost layer of the alumina. If the assumption holds that both underlie the same effect density function. So the new prefactor, which is also depending on the elastic mismatch between those layered systems, um, was, uh, was calculated using thermal analysis. So what is the result? The characteristic strength of the multi-material sample is much higher than the one of the reference monolithic material. We measured the characteristic strength of one GPA, which I have to say to our best knowledge, this is the first time that such a high strength has been measured on 3D printed alumina ceramics. The significant high strength of those multi-material sample can I, I, be explained by the shielding effect of the compressive residual stresses. The differences of the characteristic strands um, corresponds well to the estimated residual stresses. So this is one report, report of employing the manufacturing, the LCM manufacturing technology to data the strength of alumina ceramics. So how does the fracture surfaces look like? So here we can see on one hand the fracture surface of the alumina bulk material, and on the other hand, the fracture surface of the multi-material. And both we can find either large grains of the surface or surface-related grains which are responsible for fracture. So but it's important to note that in all cases, fracture starts at in multi-material starts at defects which are located in this alumina region. So, but what does it mean for a practical application? In order to explain this, the um, <clears throat> well, let's say in order to explain the, the, the relevance of the introducing zero stresses in terms of the sand, the strength data for monolithic alumina, as well as of the multi-material system were fitted both two parameter, as we saw before, and a three parameter distribution, where the total uh, stress was, was contributed by applied stress and the residual stresses. This has been inserted in the variable distribution function. And then the data can be fitted. So what can we learn about from this? So for such low, let's say low failure properties or a high, relatively high reliability, the curve of the, of the free parameter distribution tends asymptotically to a minimum strength, which is equal to the, the zero stresses below which no failure will occur. So in the case of this free parameter distribution is favored, um, such a minimum threshold strength can be estimated 
significantly enhancing the material reliability. This aspect especially should be considered in the design of ceramic systems, especially for demanding applications where low probability of failure are important, for instance, in, in implants and so on. So in conclusion, we can highlight that for the first time that is such a high strength of one GPA for alumina of 3D printed alumina was determined. So combining this multi-material approach, the design capabilities of the 3D printing technique could be a new pathway for designing uh, complex parts with outstanding mechanical strength. And to find such new no applications. Here we can see a few printed parts which were which were fabricated by Litos using such a multi-material approach. At the end, I would, say, I would like to say that all the results can be found in those papers. And yeah, thank you for your attention.